we tested every sunscreen on the best sellers list so you don't have to and we're going to tell you what the best budget options are and what the worst budget options are i'm dr shaw i'm dr maxfield welcome to our channel we talk about all things skincare we got the defined budget so what does that mean so we're going with a budget of less than 20 dollars now everyone has a different budget but with sunscreens we can make this worth so we're going to be going into our favorite picks which ones are the best and which ones are the worst which ones are worth your money? So for less than $20, here are your best budget sunscreens. Let's get into it. Here we go. Here we go. All right, so first up, Vanny Cream Facial Moisturizer Broad Spectrum SPF 30. So Vanny Cream, a dermatology favorite because they use very low allergen ingredients fragrance free always and so it really focuses on people with really sensitive skin and so we recommended it for a lot of people that have eczema dr maxfield actually put me onto this one yeah which is kind of sad for for me not dr shop but this one i've just had i've had it and i really haven't used it as much and i was just trying it on the other day i was like holy crap we've caveated mineral sunscreens to death this one is a zinc oxide mineral sunscreen the blend is insane it actually blended pretty completely with my skin tone, which was shocking to me. So for a non-tinted mineral sunscreen, blew me away on this one. Budget friendly, I have to bring it in. We don't talk about Vanna Cream too much or very often at all. I didn't expect them to come out with such a great sunscreen. They did. It's got glycerin. It's got that nice squalene finish. Of course, like Dr. Maxfield said, it is zinc based. So you can never say it has no white cast, but it's about as good as it gets. So yes, this is definitely on the best budget sunscreen list from us. Let's go into the next one. Next up on the top seller list is the Cetaphil Facial Moisturizing Lotion. So this one, I I was just cruising in the store, which I rarely do. I very rarely shop in person, but I was just making some videos. And I picked up the Cetaphil Day Lotion. This one's the SPS 50. And I was reading the ingredients and I was shocked to see that oxybenzone was in this ingredient list. Shocked. Not only because at this day and age, it's shocking anytime this ingredient is in any skincare product. Even great brands, Cetaphil is a great brand. They tailor things towards sensitive skin, but even they can have one of the few ingredients I'll say should never be in a product. At this point anymore, right? Now that there's overwhelming data that suggests, one, it's a very common photoallergen. It's not a great filter. Of course, when you look at like the toxicology data on it, you know, still approved by the FDA. But I think popular opinion, dermatologist, Allergist opinion, allergist opinion, is that this is not a great sunscreen ingredient to be putting in your sunscreens. And we have so many other options that we can go with that can give you a nice broad spectrum protection. I don't really see the purpose of including this ingredient anymore. And so this is gonna be on our worst budget sunscreen list. Next up is the Userin Daily Facial Protection Lotion. So this is one that I talked about maybe like two years ago, and I don't think I ever mentioned it ever again. It's super affordable and actually blends super well. So it's actually a mixed mineral chemical sunscreen. So it has both chemical filters, but it's also supported by zinc and titanium dioxide. But despite that, this one has pretty much no white cast, close to zero, I would say. Even better than the Vanny Cream one because it's not fully zinc oxide is supported by these chemical sunscreens. It's very similar to like Elt MD's UV Clear, which is both octanoxate and zinc based. You're still able to have that sort of blendability, that no white cast, but give you that broad spectrum protection that you're looking for. So this is actually a great sunscreen and one you may not notice on your shelf. Now there's another one from Userin uh, that's a tinted sunscreen that's been going viral right now. This one is the Userin tinted sunscreen for sensitive skin. So I think it delivers in one sense and that is it is a gentle sunscreen. I think the ingredient list is is tailored towards sensitive skin. It's obviously effective. That's a huge win. Subjectively, just from the social media experience, a lot of people do like it. My one caveat with this sunscreen is that there's a group of people who I think will not. So like it is a great sunscreen. It's probably gonna be get like a good thumbs up from me, but it does sit heavier than a lot of tinted sunscreens. And so for those with oily skin or just who really want something that feels very lightweight, they're not gonna like this one as much. So is it the best of the best of the best? I don't know. It is definitely good though. With sunscreen, we always say, it's the one that you like ultimately, as long as it has good ingredients, low allergen protection, and we've tried it and think it blends decently well, I'm willing to then recommend it as long as it's above SPF 30. So both of these Userin products will be on our best list for the best budget options, but again, it's a textural issue, so you have to decide on which one you like the best. Next up top seller here is CeraVe Hydrating Sunscreen with SPF 30. 50. Now, you'll rarely hear me personally talk negatively about a CeraVe product. This is not a good product. That's actually kind of surprising. Yeah, I, you know what's surprising? We had a very similar opinion on all these, and we actually kind of have slightly different skin types, but uh, this one, 
for both of us. Uh, the cast, pretty bad. The subject of feel, the finish, it doesn't line up for us. So if you're going to be investing in one, if you're gonna spend a little bit of money, I wouldn't go this route. And if you try it, then you're likely to not want to try other CeraVe sunscreens. The other ones are much better. So if you're looking for a sunscreen that's mineral based, that's from CeraVe, the CeraVe hydrating sunscreen with sheer tint, SPF 30, is much better than the hydrating sunscreen SPF 50, which is an awful product of the terrible white cast. Unless you're super, super pasty white, you're not gonna like this sunscreen at all. So we're gonna Photoshop into that portion <laughs> of this. <laughs> Next up is the Cetaphil Derma Control Oil Absorbing Moisturizer with sunscreen SPF 30. This one is for oily, sensitive skin, according to the packaging. We recommended this one before, so it may no, be no surprise to you, but this is, again, a budget option. The nice thing about this one is that it's great for oily skin. It's got starch and silica, which are good oil absorbers, but at the same time, it doesn't feel too heavy. I also think it's a little bit hydrating as well. Like I don't think it's not drying just because it has these ingredients. It does leave you with a nice finish, but people with oilier skin tend to love this. And it's a chemical sunscreen, so it blends with every skin type. And I've tried this on every skin type from one to six, and everybody agrees that this will leave you no white cast and blends super well. Yeah, it does have a nice hydrating finish. The subject of portion is great. Love how we're bringing it back to the oily skin people. Actually, if you don't, if you're not even resonating with the sunscreen part of this video, there's another life lesson here. Here's your life lesson. It's that you don't just buy a brand. Like I can't tell you how many times you've probably experienced this too in the office. I'm like, okay, what product are you using? For whatever condition, what product are you using? Well, I'm using CeraVe. That does nothing for me. That does nothing. It doesn't help me. It doesn't help you because as you've seen twice already here today, some great brands have good products. They have bad products. It's universal across the board. So always think product trumps brand and just try to be aware of which one you're using. Right. Which makes it very difficult for a consumer because, you know, if they don't have a very strict list of ingredients that they include and don't include, then it becomes difficult to decide as a consumer, do I like this brand or do I not like this brand? Now, CeraVe, the product is fine. It's just that it leaves a white cast. So you have to try it. So there's not like any bad ingredients in it. Now, the Cetaphil product, again, we said the Cetaphil product we didn't like from the facial moisturizer, but we like this oil absorbing one. So again, this is something you have to try. You have to look at the ingredients and you really just have to like become a more educated consumer, unfortunately, because just focusing on one brand name is never going to get you the products that you're going to need to have better skin. So the next one on the list is the Sun Bump Original SPF 50, which is, this one's interesting. It is everywhere. People actually do love this product. I'm on the coast. It is in every single store. It smells like sun bomb everywhere. Uh, but there's a very specific reason why this is actually on our do not recommend list. Yeah, so this is sort of interesting. Again, because every time we're making recommendations to you, especially when it comes to sunscreens, we're gonna try them, we're gonna use them throughout the day, we're gonna see if they pill, we're gonna see if they leave a white cast. We're also going to make sure that we're looking at every ingredient list with a fine tooth comb to make sure that we're recommending products that we would recommend to our patients and our own family members. And so the issue with this product is not the blendability because I actually think it blends wonderful. It doesn't have oxybenzone in it, which is the filter that we're trying to avoid. But what it does have in it, which I don't like, is methyl chlorothiazolinone or methyl isothiazolinone. Either way, these ingredients are very common allergens. In 2013 or 14, I can't remember now, it was the contact allergen of the year. Such an emerging common allergen that has pretty much been removed from all personal care products. It's a preservative, but very, very common allergen. And so when we're recommending products to patients and they're trying to protect their skin from the sun, and they get a terrible allergic reaction, that's definitely a step backward for a product that is really high risk of allergy. So this is not something that I'd be recommending to my patients, and this is gonna go on our worst budget list. Well, you know what's interesting? I have a thought. I wanna, I'm gonna check one thing here and I'll share it with you. Paraben free, so that's what I was checking. So I've noticed that there is a trend where though people will remove parabens, and I don't know if this was the case with them, but people will remove parabens, bring back MCI, which is actually probably the more commonly harmful of the two. Absolutely. From an allergic perspective, parabens, very uncommon allergen, methylchloroisothiazolinone, very common allergen. And so just keep that in mind that, you know, you, you need to look at the ingredients list much closer. Next up, and this is one that a lot of other people put me onto as well, is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hyaluronic Acid Moisturizer with Sun Cream. So it's part of that like Hydro Boost line, which I love the Hydro Boost line from Neutrogena. It's probably my favorite Neutrogena line. Their gel cream, phenomenal moisturizer. 
top bestseller, but I love how the products lay. It's like a gel that just like turns into like water. I don't know how to explain it. It's, it leans more gel than lotion, I guess, which I, I personally enjoy, especially in these warmer summer months. So this one blends super well and it just leaves you with this glowy finish, that hyaluronic acid dewy finish. Wonderful sunscreen for the summer. I just love it. I mean, the blend is incredible. I mean, look at the dew on my hand. You probably can't see it, but he can see it and he's miring it. I love this one. It has a weird smell a little bit when you put it on. It's not fragrance, it's fragrance free, but it's got a little bit of a smell and that could be the alcohol that's in it. I don't mind alcohol as much in sunscreens because it does help the product to layer better. Um, and I've already like put on the rest of my routine and so that it doesn't sting my skin. My, my biggest issue with these types of alcohols that may not necessarily even be drying is the stinging sensation that I get when I apply them. And this one doesn't sting me, so it doesn't bother me much. The aesthetics top notch. Um, that is definitely on our best list. Speaking of aesthetic finishes, there is another one out there. It's a newer launch. This is the Elf Sun Touchable Woe Glow. So obviously Supergroup Glow Screen is like the OG, but this is a budget friendly option very gentle, incredible feel. And then if this is for you, this is like for a niche group of people who, who I mean, you just want to look extra, extra glowy, like to the point where it's noticeable, but this one delivers. It's incredibly sheer. There's a really nice filter shine. Uh, it's exceptional. Yeah, he described it as it's like putting a filter on your skin. So it almost has like a little bit of a makeup effect. So um, for somebody who's trying to have that no makeup makeup look, um, this might be a really good option. Sunscreen one step for you to not even have to put on foundation. So I think that's a great product option out there. Of course, it's fragrance free, blends super well with the skin. So this is something that a lot of people are going to like. And it's only $14, which is pretty incredible. That's a really, really good price for a sunscreen like this. Next up, I think we talk about a few honorable mentions here. Um, one, we have to mention the Trader Joe's sunscreen. We mentioned it a bunch of times. Budget friendly option, super goop, unseen sunscreen dupe. The problem with it is that it's not widely available, right? So like you can't just walk into Target, CVS, Alta, Sephora to get it. You have to go to Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's are hard to find. And so it's just not available for everyone to go out and purchase. And so, and you can even buy it online. So it's, so it's not something that we can like recommend as like our top list right here. And then the next ones would, of course, be the Korean sunscreens, which, you know, when it comes to sunscreens, affordability and blendability and the filters and tech, you really are not going to find anything quite like that in the United States right now, unfortunately. But those definitely get honorable mention. We've talked about them in previous videos. You should see me trying to talk to my patient population about Korean sunscreens in real life. It's very difficult to not only explain them to them, but also explain how to get them. <laughs> it's really the thing, but... Uh, Amazing, we of course had to mention them here. Okay, so those, we tried them. Those are our best and worst budget options for sunscreen. It's that time of the year, so make sure you're applying at least once in the morning and then try to reply every two hours if you're out in the sun. At least SPF 30, broad spectrum, and you're gonna be good to go by me. That's it, thank you all for tuning in. Please like, comment, subscribe. We'll have a list of the products in the description. Make sure you check those out and we'll see you in the next video. We'll see you next time.